Sharkbite is probably one of the most interesting new technologies in the FPV market right now. It's a digital video system that promises to provide better image quality than the analog cameras we're used to, and I think we can all agree that's something that would be welcome in FPV. FatShark has developed a complete system here with a receiver module, multiple video transmitter options, and support for third-party cameras. We're going to look at all of that in this video. But Sharkbite has one big problem, and it's named DJI. The DJI system brought groundbreaking quality and range to the world of FPV video, and there are a lot of pilots out there who swear by it and can't imagine flying with anything else. On the other hand, there is a whole other group of pilots that refuse to give up their reliable and lightweight analog video setups. So that leaves us with one big question to answer. Is there a place for Sharkbite in this contentious space, or is it dead in the water? This is the first video in a new series I'm starting on Sharkbite. There is so much to cover about this system, and it's way too much to fit into one video, so throughout the series we'll be talking about what Sharkbite is, how to install it on a drone, what it's like to use it, and what the future of the technology could be. I really like exploring all of the angles of things like this, so hopefully we'll get to look at a few different setups and talk about some possible use cases where Sharkbite might make sense. My overall goal for the series is to help you figure out whether Sharkbite is something that you should pay attention to and possibly use in your own drones. I also want to take a quick moment and say that I'm approaching this with an open mind, and I hope you will too. I know there are people out there who say things like, stop wasting your time and just use DJI. And for all I know, maybe I'll come to the same conclusion. But I'm always interested in checking out new competition and giving a new piece of technology a chance to prove itself useful. So we're gonna dig into Sharkbite and see where it might be useful and where it might fall short and draw conclusions from there about how to feel about it. So with all that said, in this video, we're gonna talk about the basics of what Sharkbite is. I'm going to give you a tour of the system to show you what each of the parts looks like and how they would fit together into the rest of your FPV setup. At the end of this video, you should have a clear idea of what the options are in the system and what you would need if you wanted to get into Sharkbite. So all right, let's get into it. We're going to start with the basics of what Sharkbite is and how it's different from other FPV camera systems. Sharkbite is a digital video transmission system for FPV made by Fat Shark. Because it's digital, you can get better image quality than what we're used to with analog. In this case, you get a 720p image at 60 frames per second, which is definitely a higher resolution than what you'd see with an analog camera. Of course, Sharkbite isn't the first digital FPV system we've seen, and as I already mentioned, DJI is a pretty major competitor. So Sharkbite definitely needs to differentiate itself from DJI to even be considered, and Fat Shark has tried to do that in several ways. First, it advertises near zero latency, which is important for racing or highly technical freestyle flying. That's definitely not a promise DJI can make about their system, so if you're into those types of flying, that could be compelling to you. Another benefit to Sharkbite is that the video transmitters are much smaller and lighter than what you can currently get for DJI. If you're wanting to install a digital FPV system on a Whoop, this seems like it could be a better option. Those video transmitters are also a little bit cheaper than what you'd find with DJI, and that's true for Sharkbite as a whole. The other big thing Sharkbite has going for it is flexibility and third-party support. With DJI, you're going to have to use DJI goggles and a DJI or CAD-X video transmitter and camera. It's a closed system and you don't have any other options. Sharkbite is different in that you can use any set of modern FPV goggles as long as they have an HDMI input. They're also seeming to be more open with third-party manufacturers, and you can already buy Runcam and Foxier cameras that work with Sharkbite. I'm a big fan of this approach because it gives us more options to choose from. So that's DJI. And if we compare Sharkbite to analog, we should get better image quality and possibly better range. We're going to have to test that to find out. Of course, nothing is without its downsides, and Sharkbite has a few of those too. Compared to DJI, all indications are that it will have worse image quality and shorter range. Compared to analog, it's going to be heavier, more expensive, and more complicated to set up. So what I just told you is basically the marketing pitch for and against Sharkbite. Over the course of this series, we're going to look at all of these things and make some of our own judgments about how much each one matters. It'll be interesting to see how close the final conclusions are to this list I just gave you. But for now, I want to give you an overview of what parts are in the Sharkbite system and how they fit together. We're going to start from the goggles and work our way all the way out to the camera. 
That means that we're starting with the SharkBite receiver module. This receiver fits onto the front of your FPV goggles and allows you to receive the digital video signal. It'll work on any goggles with a mini HDMI input, so you might even be able to use the goggles you already have. You do have to physically mount the receiver onto your goggles. If you're using Fat Shark or similar slimline goggles, there's an included bracket that allows you to mount the receiver onto the fan housing of those goggles. If you're using something different, you'll have to figure out your own mounting solution. The receiver contains two patch antennas and has two SMA connectors to allow you to attach two additional antennas. Fortunately, since SharkBite works over the same 5.8 GHz frequency range that analog FPV uses, you may already have antennas that will work. You'll also find a three position switch on the receiver for navigating the menus, as well as a micro SD slot for the included DVR. There are a couple of challenges to be mindful of with the SharkBite receiver. The first is that it's fairly heavy at 80 grams, and remember that you'll have all of that weight out on the end of your goggles, so it will definitely make the goggles feel heavier on your head. It also has a cooling fan built in, so if you're really sensitive to noise, that's something else to be aware of. You'll also need to power the receiver, and FatShark includes a couple of cable options to help you out. The first option is to use the included XT60 adapter to power it from a 3 or 4S drone battery. That cable does include a Y adapter, so you can power your goggles off of the same battery if you want. But keep in mind that you can't use anything over 4S with that cable. You do have another power option, which is to use the other included cable to power the receiver from the balance connector of a 2S Fat Shark goggle battery. This is the approach I'm planning to take, but you should be aware that it will reduce your battery life. So that's the receiver. We're gonna move on now to the video transmitter that goes on your drone, and there are actually three options currently available for that. The first is the TX5 S1. It's the cheapest option at around $50, weighs 5.7 grams, and has a 25 by 25 mounting pattern. The size and shape of this transmitter makes me think it's designed for micros and whoops. It has a 200 milliwatt output power and it's probably best to think of this as the default SharkBite transmitter and the one that most people have been using so far. Next, we have the TX5 M1. As you can see, I don't currently have one of these to test. This is a bigger and more expensive transmitter and it comes in at around $100. It has a much thicker design with two stacked boards, it weighs more, and it seems like it'd be better suited for Cinewoops or 5-inch drones, but it does offer an increased 500 milliwatt output power. If you're interested in seeing tests with this one, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll be able to get my hands on one. Finally, we have the TX5 R1. This transmitter just came out recently, but it looks really interesting and I wanted to test it. It's $90 and has a 20 by 20 mounting pattern and weighs 6 grams, but the form factor is this weirdly long board that won't fit on every drone. This one also has a 200 milliwatt output power, but from what I've heard, it has better range and generates less heat than the older TX5 S1. I'm really interested in testing the R1 out, and it's exciting to see that Fat Shark is continuing to improve on these transmitters. All three of these transmitters have an input power requirement of 7 to 26 volts. What's really important about that number is that it means you're going to have to use at least a 2S battery to power a SharkBite transmitter, so unfortunately this isn't viable for 1S drones just yet. You'll also need a free UART on the flight controller to attach the TX and RX pins from the video transmitter. This is how the transmitter communicates with your flight controller to get the information to the OSD as well as to change the power and channel settings. Finally, you'll need a standard 5.8 GHz UFL antenna for whichever transmitter you choose, because none of these transmitters come with an antenna. Now we'll talk about the final part of the system, which is the camera. SharkBite is an entire system, so you have to use a SharkBite compatible camera on the drone. You can't just use whatever camera you have lying around. These cameras use a connection standard called MIPI, so whichever camera you buy will include a MIPI cable that you'll use to attach the camera to the video transmitter. There are currently two cameras that work with SharkBite. The first is the Runcam Nano HD, and that's the one I'll be starting my testing with. There's also the Foxier Digisite 2, which has an interesting added benefit of being compatible with analog systems. I'll be testing that one eventually as well. 
Both cameras use a 14 by 14 millimeter mounting pattern and both have a 1280 by 720 resolution. They also both cost the same at around $50 US. I'm not really sure which camera will end up being better, but we'll know after some testing. So those are the major parts of the SharkBite system. If this is something you want to try out yourself, you just need the receiver module, a video transmitter, and a camera. You can see that you have a couple of options to pick from, but you can also save a bit of money by buying a bundled kit to get started. I'll have links in the description of this video if you're interested in checking any of this equipment out. I'm going to say that I'm really excited to start testing SharkBite, and I'm hopeful that it's going to be good. I think that what we're going to see is that it does have a place in the FPV market, maybe for whoops or racing drones or something else. But there's also more to consider than just the image quality or range of a system like this. We also have to consider how user friendly it is to set up and how reliable it is in use. And we want to think about what the future potential is. Does it seem like Fatshark will continue to invest in it and will other companies join in? Is there more that can be done to improve the system over time or does it have fundamental flaws? These are some of the questions we're going to be taking a much closer look at in the rest of this series. In the next video, I'm going to be installing SharkBite on a drone, configuring it, and doing some test flights, so look for that to come soon, and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss it. But for now, I want to ask you a few questions. First, I'm interested in what your impression of SharkBite is with what we know right now. Do you think it's viable, or are you skeptical of it? As this series goes on, it'll be interesting to see if those opinions change or not. I'm also interested in hearing what tests you would like to see. Let me know in the comments if there's something specific you're wondering about. I have a couple of tests in mind, but if there's something that you want to know, I'll try and include that in the testing in the next few videos. So that's it. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.